If it wasn't for the title of the video, you would have never guessed what this is. That's a hand crank air raid siren. It is supposed to sound the alarm with the help of human efforts when there is a threat of enemy air or missile strikes. Of course, we immediately tried to turn the crank and get the sound out of it. But nothing worked, it appeared to be jammed and the turbine refused to rotate. Ok, we'll have to disassemble it and do our best to make it work. We have four days of work ahead of us to restore this device, so let's start with coarse cleaning of the dust and dirt with a brush. There is an information plate on the front cover, which we'll try to clean and read the inscription later on. Fortunately, there's no rust on the main parts of the device, because they are moulded from solid pieces of aluminium which don't corrode. Using the wrench we restored in the previous video, we remove the top handle and its mount. Do the same with the crank that transmits the force to the turbine. Put some lubricant on the threads of the bolts and carefully unscrew them one by one. The safety grille is fastened at the bottom with two plates. It serves as a barrier for human fingers, which could easily be cut off by the turbine if they got into holes. The next step is to remove the cover, and it took us almost an hour and a half to get it off without damaging anything. We thought this would be the end of the video, but eventually it opened up and we saw the bearing covered with grease and dirt. Next we remove the turbine itself, which is also mounted on a bearing located inside the front cover. Judging by these dents that are made on the fixation, it is hardly possible to remove without damage. The gears under the protective cover were really hard to turn. We unscrew the bolts and remove the protective cover. There are several apparently plastic gears inside. The old grease is very hard to remove, but we had to clean it, otherwise we'll smear everything with it. Remove the spring-loaded retainer and the wire that holds it in place. We wanted to take off the last gear, but then we realized that it was fixed with a rivet. Therefore, we decided to clean it right in its place with this kind of a cleaner. It is biodegradable, so it won't hurt the environment. The other gear was attached to the turbine itself with a big nut, so I had to use this ring spanner to unscrew it. Everything seems to be very rusty in here. This bearing had to be cleaned of old grease and sand by wetting and turning it. It was hard to do with a screwdriver. However, we managed to attach it to a screwdriver with a small stick and after 20 minutes it could spin easily. Two aluminium rivets prevented the plate from removing. Fortunately, there were through holes on the other side and with the help of a blunt nail I managed to knock them out without any effort. And then began the most monotonous and difficult part of the job, namely the removal of old paint and to replace it with a fresh one. This process took almost a whole day, but it was worth doing. The surface of the piece was quite rough, even after the casting at the factory, so we decided not to smooth it out and leave it in its original form. We decided not to waste time on cleaning inside of the body, since it would be covered anyways and there was no harm for rust inside. In the evening, when it got dark, we continued cleaning the parts indoors. Using alcohol, we managed to soften the great deposit on the plate and we found out that the siren has been produced more than 40 years ago, in the distant 1979. The next day, we washed all the dirt off of the turbine using a jet of water. However, the rust from the metal was transferred to aluminium, so we used a drill with an abrasive bit to remove it. We managed to remove the old deposits of dirt from the grill with an abrasive sponge, and now the grill looks like a new one. The bolts were also cleaned by hand with the same sponge, but then we remembered an easier method using a screwdriver. It works perfectly. Next, we take a piece of sandpaper and fix the handle along with its mount on the table with a clamp. Now we clean the handle from the old coating. All of a sudden, white pieces of ice began to fall from the sky. 
We had an umbrella, but it was still too cold. However, that didn't stop us. After all, three pairs of pants and a warm jacket were doing their job, and we had to keep working. We put the wooden crank on the bolt and insert it into the screwdriver. This is how we clean it up a little bit. The black paint has soaked in very deeply, and in order to remove it, we have to scrape off a significant layer of wood, so the crank will become too thin. That's why we used a bit of our favorite linseed oil and took the risk to coat the wood in this condition. After all, such an effect looks really nice. Emphasizing the great age of the item, we still had to clean up this piece and a few bolts that were heavily corroded. For this reason, we covered them with vinegar and cleaned them with a toothbrush from a Polish MRE the next morning. The front grill of the siren was polished to a shine. After that, we prepared the body for painting, covering the elements to prevent them from being painted over. We're going to paint it with this red paint with a green frog on the label. It says that you can use the paint without priming. Let's get started. The color was chosen quite well, since it should be bright and noticeable from a distance, so that anyone can quickly find a siren and use it if necessary. The paint had to be applied in three coats, including a drying time, so that it would adhere firmly to the parts. Then it was properly dried in the sun. Finally, we prepare all the parts for the assembly. Put the bearing in place and take a tube of thick grease, which we then rub inside. It should be applied to all parts so that they don't rust and easily rotate. In fact, the maximum volume of the siren will depend on it. Install the retainer of the big yellow gear along with the spring. Mount the second gear and check if it works. Close the mechanism with the protective cover and then insert the turbine in its place, pre-lubricating all the places of contact. We decided to attach this plate with such nails, which will act as rivets. Aluminium is a rather soft metal, so the nails fit in the holes quite easily. Put the front cover on top of the siren, and at this point we can try to slightly rotate the crank. Notice how slowly we turn the crank by hand and how fast the turbine spins. Apparently, it blows the air through the holes in a special way, and as a result it should emit sound. And at the end of the video, we'll test it out. Put on the protective grill, and after installing the washers, we tighten the two parts of the body with bolts. Mount the upper handle, by which you should hold the siren while rotating, since it requires some effort. Install the crank back, making sure that it can rotate. Remove the masking tape from the grill, and finally, our siren is ready. It looks really cool and beautiful, as if it just came off the assembly line in the factory. Now we have to test it and check if it works properly. Using it in the backyard sounds like a very bad idea, so we went deep in the woods with the siren, and now we're going to try to get some sound out of it. Cool, it seems to be working. I don't know how it works, but it works. It sounds very loud. I think it may be heard miles away, and all the animals in the forest probably don't understand what's going on. Thank you for spending 10 minutes with us. I'll see you in the next video.